Hello, I'm Dan Hounsel, Editor-in-Chief of Facility Maintenance Decisions Magazine. Thank you for attending today's webcast entitled Tipping Point, When to Replace Instead of Repairing Your Roof. Our presenter today is Mike Spock. Mike is a roofing project manager at Smith Seckman Reed in Nashville. He has been in the roofing industry for more than 30 years and has worked as a roofing contractor and a roof consultant. He is a certified level one infrared thermographer and serves as president of the Mid-South chapter of the Roof Consultants Institute. Today's learning objectives include reviewing proper inspection procedures, identifying common roof challenges, explaining how to use the roof inspection data to make decisions, and outlining when it is best to replace your roof instead of repair it. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping details. A live question and answer session will follow today's presentation. To submit questions, please use the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen and send your questions to all panelists. Our presenter will answer as many questions as time permits. At the conclusion of today's webcast, you will receive a PDF copy of today's presentation slides. You also will receive a link to a brief online assessment. When you successfully complete this assessment, you will receive your CEU certificate. With that, I'll turn it over to Mike. Well, hello, everybody. Um, welcome today, and I appreciate you inviting me, uh, Dan, and, and I'm glad everyone could attend. Um, hope, my hope is to keep this thing entertaining a little bit uh, and provide some education for you. I certainly understand the value of your time. Uh, time is money, so we'll get that. We'll, we'll get started. Okay. Uh, like Dan touched on earlier, I've got some agendas I want to cover today in our in our uh, presentation in order to be able to accomplish the goals that we set out for. We'll talk a little bit about roof inspection and asset management. Those are very important assets when you try to figure out, you know, do I make a decision on this? You have to be able to get accurate information. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to look at the associated costs. Uh, typical cost of repairing the system, typical cost of replacing the system, and how that system um, and economical works. Is it, is it wise to do that? Is it not? Uh, we're going to take a look at the decision-making process of actually moving forward to decide to replace the roof or to repair the roof. Either one of those decisions has to be made based on upon information. So, in the introduction, You know, when do you replace instead of repairing your roof? That information is based on decisions. Any decision you make in life, whether or not you're buying a car, buying a house, buying a piece of machinery, changing the carpet in a building, changing the light, everything is based upon information. And for the lack, I mean, for, the, for this presentation, we're going to call information data points. And there are four of them that we're going to look at today that help you make this decision. Uh, of course, the most educated you are, uh, the better decision you can make. Therefore, I'm a firm believer that knowledge slash information, in this case we're going to call information data, is essential. Uh, when, the, when deciding uh, whether to keep uh, your roof or replace your roof system, The condition of a roof is critical to the operations of a commercial roof. Being facility managers, I'm sure you understand that. If your roof is leaking, it's causing you trouble, it's causing you pain. If you're in a healthcare environment, it's affecting the quality of care. If you're in a production environment, it may be affecting the production that you have. You may have to shut lines down. If you're in a process facility and it's causing uh, leaks, you've got problems. So definitely the condition of your system is real important when you're making these decisions. We all understand, too, that ensuring the performance of your roof extends the value of your roof asset. Now, over the years, it's become more and more prevalent in the roofing industry as facility owners understand the importance of maintenance. For many, many years, maintenance was just sort of something that we did when we had to, and at least we addressed it. We didn't do any routine or preventive maintenance. But over time, uh, I believe I'm seeing more of a trend 
in that occurring if people realize the value of doing maintenance. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. But before we get into that, let's touch on roof inspections. We're going to look at when to do your roof inspection, how to do your roof inspection. We're also going to look at what that information that you get back from that roof inspection tells you. What does it tell you about your life cycle of the roof? Where are things at? What does it mean? Fact one, this is an industry fact for you. A comprehensive roof inspection program is an essential tool to extending the service life of any roof system. And that's regardless of the system. EPDM, some plastic, single plies, modified, steel cups, metal roofs, the same thing. A comprehensive inspection is going to make sure that you stay on top of your roof. You understand what's going on with your roof before major things happen. And what does comprehensive mean? Well, in the industry terms, comprehensive has three components. One, it's a thorough inspection, not just, hey, I walked on the roof today, it didn't look okay, I think. No, it's more than that. It's a thorough inspection. It's a periodic inspection done on a timely basis, uh, and it's performed by trained individuals. And that doesn't mean that it has to be a roofing professional such as myself or another roof consultant or a roofing contractor. Training can also mean training your internal staff to understand key components, what to look for. And you can also get help from any roof consultant or contractor would help you understand in doing an inspection, what are the things I look for? You're not going to know that right out of the box. It's going to take some education and some training to share that to you. I'm going to talk a little bit about those things today. What are the six components of a roof system that I need to look at when an inspection is done? Of course, the field of the roof, the middle of the roof system, perimeter edge flashings, curve flashings around equipment, penetration flashings around piping and, and other things, drainage systems, uh, your drains, your overflow drains, your scuppers, parapet wall. You know, what's happening on that parapet wall? What's the top of that parapet wall doing? Is it sealed? Does it allow water to get into the wall, which comes down into the building? Um, and then we're going to take a look at rooftop equipment. You can have a great system, but if your rooftop equipment is open, it's going to allow water to get in through the equipment into the building. When? Well, I'm a firm believer that you should look at your roof every month. And I understand that there's many people that just can't do that. Um, but if you can get some trained people on your staff to help you with this, I think looking at your roof is a very important um, item to do and it needs to be done on a monthly basis. I also recommend doing it after every major storm. You have a major thunderstorm come by, certainly any kind of a wind event, heavy wind, uh, certainly any kind of tornadic activity or hurricane, anything like that, you need to take a look at it. And then I'm going to talk to you about a semi-annual inspection. And that's if your, if your calendar starts in January and you go through this year, uh, in June you need to do a semi-annual inspection six months later. And then you'll do an annual inspection again uh, at the end of the year around the December point if things started in, in January. Now, who can do these inspections? I mentioned earlier to you that, you know, trained people in your facility can do the monthly inspection. It's just a matter of knowing what to look for. I'm going to talk a little bit about that with you today. Also, looking at it after every storm. Again, facility people can do that. I am a firm believer that your semi-annual inspection needs to be done by a roofing professional, someone with more than five years of uh, diagnostic experience, either from a contractor level or a consultant level. And then your annual inspection, I believe, needs to be done by a roof consultant with many years of roof experience so that they can gauge the estimated service life of your roof, how, what the condition is, accurately determine the condition, accurately weigh different options for you. Um, that's going to be beneficial when you make your decision. Again, it's all information points that you're looking at. Basic training for your people. Uh, simple, simple thing to do. Just teaching them what general items I need to look for. Also, it's real important to train your people how to handle a warranty claim. How do you follow up on a warranty claim? Do 
keeping accurate records of warranty claims and inspections are also important. Sometimes manufacturers will take your claim and they'll send out somebody or someone when they will come. If you don't document the fact that it, they come and they did this, it's important to keep records in a certain place so that you know where to find that information if you have any prolonged periods of time where you have any problems. So let's dive down a little bit deeper and take a look at roof inspections a little bit. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I'm really going to focus more today on what is the decision-making process to either replace or repair. Also going to talk to you a lot about what value asset uh, means when you're talking about roofing. So I'm going to dive down a little bit into inspections. The roof loft is what I would call the monthly inspection. Here you're going to take a look at just the overview of conditions. You're going to walk every roof system that you have. You're going to walk around the perimeter and the edges. You're going to look for things that look out of place, things that may just look wrong. Hopefully you've had some training and you'll be able to find those items that are throwing up a red flag saying, you know, this doesn't look right. This is open. This needs to be fixed. So you're going to write down any concerns that you have, write down any problems that you have, you're going to also need to take this information and schedule repairs. You're going to look at your drainage systems, make sure that your scuppers and your drains are functioning properly. Make sure that your coping caps are still attached to the top of the wall and the joints aren't open allowing water in. And certainly you're going to check the field membrane. Storm walks. If you're paying attention to the slide, you'd notice that this is about the same slide as it was before. That's because it really is. So after every storm, you've had an event, uh, something that could have been blown across the roof, damaged the roof system, and if you wait to the next month, and or maybe you miss a month and come back two months later, um, you could have a different outcome of this. And the most important thing that I can stress to you in this presentation, and I hope you take away from this, is if you have a small cut on your roof, if you leave it open for a long period of time, it's going to cause you pain you are going to have problems from that open condition. So we'll take a look at that today. Your professional inspections that I talked about, again, your six-month inspection and your one-year inspection, um, those do need to be performed by professional looking people, hopefully someone that you've got a relationship with and you trust, or someone that has demonstrated they can be trustworthy. And what's the difference in those two inspections? Not much, uh, except for the fact that your annual is going to provide you some budget information. So let's take a look at this list and compare the two. The roof check inspection basically is an executive summary that would be involved. Real short paragraph for those people that only got 30 seconds to read this report, you know, what's going on. This is it in a bullet. You need to have that there. A detailed condition analysis with photos. Hey, this is happening. This condition is open. This condition is deteriorated. This condition is doing that. Pictures to demonstrate your perspective. You need to have a list of corrective actions that needs to be done there. Also, tracking the trends that may be developing. And then certainly define any next steps that need to be taken. Now, the difference between the semi annual inspection and the annual roof inspection is you'll notice. After the basic steps, you're going to have budget forecasting. And this is why I feel this needs to be done by an experienced roof consultant. This budget forecast is going to provide you with a five-year budget forecast, uh, maybe a one-year, depending on what the client wants. But if you're trying to do long-range planning, I think a five-year is what the average is in the industry, and that's really what you need. You're also going to need some advanced planning. Uh, you know, what's going on? What do we need to do with this? What's the long-term vision of this? Key facility interest or need. I have learned in my experience to make that a part of my annual assessment. You need to find out from the corporate management of the facility if they can tell you. Sometimes they can't. You know, what are we going to do with this? You know, in two years we're going to move. In a year and a half we're not going to be making bag bagels. We're going to be making donuts or chicken, or whatever it may be, or, you know, we're going to change this into a medical office building rather than a hospital. The hospital is going to be built right beside us. So, you know, all of those exterior factors are going to have an input, and those need to be included when you analyze your budget. You need to analyze according to what the plan is for the facility. It may make a big difference in what you plan to do. 
Act two, performing the appropriate maintenance in a timely manner will extend the life of any roof. And that's, again, that's any roof system that has maintenance done that's going to last longer than one that doesn't. That's a proven fact. Appropriate, meaning the right thing to do. It was fixed properly using the proper materials. Timely, meaning it was done pretty timely. If you wait three or four months in, in a case, it could be a different outcome. Um, so all that's important. What does maintenance really do for me? Well, here's what it really does for you. This has been proven, and there's thousands of articles on the Internet about this. Routine maintenance, routine, I would say routine and periodic maintenance, um, basically extends the service life of the roof system. Now, let me back up. What is service life? Service life is the period of time that your roof remains serviceable. It provides a watertight and dry environment for the building, and it keeps uh, what it's supposed to do, keeps it insulated, well insulated, and keeps it uh, watertight. Routine maintenance is also going to reduce your replacement cost. And here's what I mean by that. If your roof system has been maintained on a regular basis, you're going to be able to extend the service life of that roof. And we talked about that a second ago. But not only are you going to be able to extend your service life, there's a good opportunity for you to do a recovery system rather than a replacement. And for those of you that don't know, a recovery system would be a system where you don't have to take all the insulation off. You've protected enough over time that the insulation is protected. You can simply remove the roof covering, possibly put some more insulation on the existing, perhaps a cover board on the top of that, and then a new membrane and have a system that's typically a recovery. But there's lots of different types of recovery systems. Uh, but the most important thing is that if you do routine regular maintenance, you're going to stop any business interruption. You're going to stop any downtime. Um, I've done a lot of work over uh, manufacturing facilities uh, where they make making potato chips or crackers. You know, it doesn't take but a few interruptions, and you, you break down the line that's costing, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars an hour because it's not making crackers because you've got a water leak. That's a problem. And you've got to address that. And how they address that is making sure that regular routine maintenance is done. I also like to include in my maintenance plan recommendations to people a roof access management plan. Now, what is that, roof access? Well, if someone has to go up on top of your roof, you need to know it. You need to be with them. You need to know what work they're doing up there. You need to have a brief inspection of the roof area before they do the work and after they leave. In my personal opinion, I would make sure that anyone that accesses your rooftop is not just allowed to walk up there. They need to be accessed. They need to know which way to go. You need to see what they're doing. Not that you have to babysit them all day, but at the same point, you want to be able to make sure that when they leave your site, that roof has not been torn to pieces and it's in the same condition it was when you left. So you need to do an inspection sign-off. Someone in your facility staff needs to go up there with them, watch what they do, write down what was done, what, what were they on the roof for, and then what happened. The roof checked out great. Just that kind of documentation will help you have a trail. Certainly, if anything gets damaged, now at the time, you want them to tell you, even if they feel like they're going to get in trouble. Just try to reemphasize with them they're not. If they will tell you that you have a problem before you have to discover months later that you have a problem, it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. So that's why I'm a firm believer in a roof access management plan. Cleaning is also important. Removing any loose debris, the bleed that flows around, uh, checking around your drains to make sure your drains and scuppers are working, making sure that your membrane is clean. I recommend once a quarter. Some people do it once a year. You know, it's hard to inspect the roof if it's covered with materials that you can't see the roof membrane. The whole purpose of an inspection is to make sure that you see the membrane, denote any items that may be needing repair. You can't see that with a bunch of debris on there. Emergency repairs are also important. You're going to have to have to use duct tape or caulk or steel, just anything to reduce the impact of having an open cut. So as you do your roof walk, Maybe have one of your maintenance guys there with you. As you're walking around looking at the area, just put a piece of yellow duct tape or um, 
lock on something just to make sure you feel it watertight until the repair person can come. I don't leave that duct tape there or that seam up there in that case. Uh, it's just for a temporary repair to keep whatever water you can out. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you a few things to maintain. And I'm not going to elaborate on this. It's going to go fairly quick because this is not the heart of what I want to talk about today. But routine maintenance and covers, you know, changing the exposed sealant, pipe flashing, counter flashing, things that expire with the sealant uh, flashing, um, pitch pocket pan, things like that. You need to check your drains. And I've said that several times. I'll probably get tired of hearing it. But I can't tell you the number of systems I go up to and the drain's not working or you've got, like, in the third picture there, you've got no uh, drain dome on there. So not only is your roof drain not working now, it's clogged. So you've got to pay to get that unclogged if it's got debris in it. So just checking those things out on a regular basis and taking care of them is important. The other thing that's important is any damage that you see. If you see anything that's damaged, deteriorated, cut, opened up, any open things around the field of the roof or the flashings on the roof, the quicker you get those addressed, the better off your system is going to be. Also includes, I'm sorry, also includes uh, edge metal, looking around different things. You can see the far right picture on the right, all that moss and green light that's growing up there. Well, obviously, you've got a ponding water problem, or water is just dripping on there and sitting there to the point that you've just got something growing up on your roof. Now, on the surface, that doesn't look too bad, but you wait about six months and the roots of those plants start to grow into that system, then you start to have deficient conditions within the system, and it's infecting the integrity of the roof. That's a bad, bad situation. Fact three, proactive maintenance will reduce your analog cost. And we're going to talk a little bit in a minute about analog cost. However, on the other hand, inaction will cause you unforeseen, far-reaching consequences. I'm going to give you one example of that. I could talk to you about this for hours. This is a roof system that we replaced a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Had a leak in this system for, as far as I can tell, 15 years. The deck felt a little soft on it. You can see by the picture here, once we got in there and got involved in this and taking this roof system off, uh, we noticed that the deck was deteriorated. We had planned on it. But, you know, this is a great way to make your roof project cost you three times as much as you thought. If you have to start replacing your steel deck because it's been wet for so many years that you've now got to shut that wing of that area down. You've got to take the deck out. No one can be underneath it when you do that. You have to put new decking. You have to attach it to the struts and the trusses. Then you get the roof of the building the way you thought. So not only did the project take longer, it took a lot more money. So, it, you know, there are consequences for interaction, just like with your car. You don't change the oil in your car. Trust me, your engine is not going to last as long as you want. So it's not the same philosophy with that. Now we're going to move to roof asset management, getting ready to start talking about some financial pieces of this puzzle that we need to talk about. The systematic process of developing, operating, maintaining, upgrading, and disposing of an asset in the most cost-effective manner. That's the definition of asset management, any asset management. And it's also the definition of roof asset management. How do we make wise decisions? Well, we have to have accurate information on a timely basis and considering all the facts. Here's a slide that may interest you. Now, this is a couple of, well, actually, it's time slide. This is from 2012. As you see here, these are the reasons risk systems fail. Here you see that you have 10% of the um, Roof systems are failing because of material. Only 10. We, we spend so much time and energy. We spend so much time and energy on getting a great warranty for our roofs, but it's not the warranty that's the problem. And 
it's not the material rather than it's the problem. However, on the other hand, we can see improper installation. 35% of the roofs that were replaced had to that failed actually were because of improper installation. Something that was supposed to last 20 on the of 10. Also, you can see here where the lack of maintenance. Lack of maintenance had about 25% effect. So, unlike what you think, you know, the product failure is not the issue. Nearly 65% of all roofs in the United States are prematurely replaced. This is some of the reasons why. That's a pretty big number when you think about it. That means almost seven out of 10 roofs are replaced too early. Why is that? Some people just didn't maintain it. Some people didn't know. Some people were misled, thinking that you had to replace it and you could have done another option. There's a lot of options that have to be investigated when you make these decisions. So here's a graph for you. Hopefully this will mean something to you. Now, I'm not an accountant. I'm a roofing guy. But you can look at this depreciated value. Everything depreciates. I have a truck that's going to depreciate. If it was a company truck, after about three years or five years, the company depreciates that, I get another new truck and ride around. If it's a computer, it's a couple of years, it depreciates because the inner workings of a computer doesn't last as long. No difference with your risk system. You've made a start out with the value of a roof at $156,000, but in the 10th year, it's 90% worth the value. But look at the 30th year. For the 30th year, this roof is only 30% worth of what you paid for. So this roof would be $46,951. Now, this is a roof system with maintenance. This has actually lasted pretty long. The average lifespan in the United States for roof systems is 18 years. This has lasted longer than 18. This is almost 30 years if you get it to last that long. And what would happen on a system that wasn't even maintained? That's what this slide shows you have a system that's never maintained, no maintenance is ever done, then your roof depreciates at a quicker rate. Year one, it's 100% at 156000 Year 10, it's at 50% of the value, $78,252, roughly. Now, why am I showing you these slides? Well, it's important for you to always understand the value of your assets. When you start making decisions on whether or not you're going to fix this roof or you're going to replace this roof, you really need to know how old your roof is, how many more years you've got of service life, and what the value is. And we're going to talk more about this in a minute, but just real quickly looking at this slide. Suppose someone comes to you and says, well, Mike, I can fix this roof for you. It's going to cost you $40,000, and I can get you five more years. Is it worth it? I don't know. The roof is only $31,000. But if I take the look at the 40 and it gives me five, if you divide that by each other, it's costing me about 80 years. So, you know, there are ways to look at that, and we're going to take some more harder look at that in a minute. So, again, what we're talking about here are data points. We're talking about information, and there are four of them that you need to be familiar with. Now we're going to dive into what those are. There are four data points that you need to look at when you're considering any action on your roof. The first is the condition. What is the condition of the current roof? And I think that condition needs to be defined by a professional, not by someone who thinks they know roof and or it looks like it's in good shape or it's leaking all the time, it's in terrible shape. Just because a roof system leaks doesn't mean it's in bad shape. It may just need some attention. So condition is important. Cost. What's the cost going to be? The repair cost, the replacement cost, how's this cost going to analyze out? So that's a data point. Another data point is your building use. What's the building being used for? What's it going to be used for in the future? What's it used for right now? Other factors may be, what's the relationship in this factor that I'm looking at, this roof compared to other roofs around it? Other factors may be the building, you know, as a company, we've decided to move to Cleveland or wherever it may be. We don't want to be here. We're going to have to um, I always like to refer to other factors. When I first started doing roofing work years and years ago, we did a lot of work with Walmart. And this is someone from Walmart here. Um, I don't mean anything bad by that. But we worked for Walmart, and Walmart had a different philosophy with their building. 
you know, they were building smaller stores at the time, and they figured that they were going to only be in a location for eight years. So they really didn't need a risk system that was going to last 30 years. They really only wanted one that was going to last eight to ten. They changed philosophies when they started building bigger boxes, bigger stores, and now they have these huge mega stores, and they want these risk systems to last forever. So now they're looking at 35, 40-year risk systems with ongoing periodic maintenance, annual inspection, semi-annual inspection. So they've had to step up the game to get it to last. So that's just one real-world example of the factors that we're looking at today. Key number one, you need to obtain accurate condition information. In the roofing industry, that's called the RCI, or Roof Condition Index. That needs to be provided by experienced and trained roof professionals. You're seeking non-biased professional information, and you need to remember when you're thinking about this, just because you look at something in June doesn't mean it's going to be the same in July. I mean, it's not July, but actually, you know, let's look past the weather cycle. So if you look at something in June and it comes to weather and you have a hard winter, then the same condition that you looked at in June is not going to be the same condition you had in, in January. So you need to remember weather cycles and timeliness of this information is very important. The second key you need to remember is you've got to get accurate cost information. Our, this is called the RCI, a Recommended Corrective Action. Got an A there, a lot of acronyms, and you don't have to remember all this for now. Um, but, again, this information is provided to you by an experienced and trained professional who knows budgets, knows risk systems, knows options, knows what options are going to take and cost. Again, you're looking for a non-biased professional opinion, um, not from necessarily a contractor that's going to come in and give you a price because they have something at heart that they're wanting. Make sure that whatever they're recommending is justified by the photos that you see in the inspection report. You need to understand that what they're telling you is accurate. So you want an accurate cost to repair, to replace, or to recover your system so you can analyze the cost. The third information you're trying to seek of is long-term building information. What's the building plan? What's the company plan? Change in operations? Well, sometimes we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Sometimes we do know, and sometimes only certain people know, and they don't want to share that information. I cannot appreciate that, but at the same point, when you're making long-term million dollar decisions here on some buildings, you need to make sure that you have the information. I have been in situations where I have seen a company spend the money to replace an entire risk system on the building and then they abandon the building. The building sat there for eight months before it was ever bought purchased. So you know building use is an important factor that we need to consider. So these Four things, it's hard to say one is more important than the other because they're interrelational. They relate to each other, the cost, you know, the condition, all those things have to do with each other. Sort of like a balloon. If you squeeze on one end of the balloon, the air goes to the other side. That may be what this decision is like. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. You have your roof inspected and it comes back in the RCI, your condition is determined to be poor. Your risk system is in bad shape. Too bad, it needs work. So what does it mean? Well, it's determined that if you spend a little bit of cost, you can improve the condition. Spend a little bit of cost, you can extend your service life from poor to good with very reasonable amount of effort. And yeah, that would be a yes. That would be a good investment, low cost, good investment, good return. That makes, that makes a good decision. I'm going to move that direction. So what happens in the same situation if the cost is large, if it's a larger cost, and but you're, taking, you're still taking it from poor to good, but what if it's more than reasonable of the cost of that? And I'm going to go through cost in detail in a second, but this is more philosophy of what happens. So you take a current situation, you spend a lot of cost, you get a little bit of improvement, is it worth it? Maybe not. Maybe so. Depends on the dollar value. We'll look at that more in a minute. And what happens in the same situation if you have a situation that comes and you're in extremely poor condition? 
got some costs that you have to spend, and it's going to move you up to poor. It's not going to do anything for you. Is it worth it spending the money? Maybe if it keeps the water out, maybe if it keeps the plant open or the facility dry. But what if it doesn't? What if there is no guarantee that spending a lot of money or some money is going to make that work? You have to think that. So these, I'm just trying to get with you and show you how these four data points relate to each other. Then you have to analyze, well, what's the building use going to be? What's the duration of us staying there? Are we going to change events? Are we going to do an addition? You know, it may be that a big cost is good or you know, a little cost would be good or a big cost would not be good. So you have to decide your budget limitations. Your building needs may very well define what your budget limitations may be. Other building factors may come into play. What about your building layout? The area of use importance, the ownership, future plans we talked about. But other factors could be also considered when you do some budget limitations. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Let's say you own this facility and you've got 40 roof areas underneath this building. Okay, well, that's great. And let's say that I'm going to try to go to the corner tool now. Here with me a second. Let's say that this roof area right here is in bad shape. It's got to be replaced. Well, okay, but this roof area right here is in not quite a bad shape. It doesn't really need to be replaced this year. But the only way you can get around the facility is to cause you pain and trouble. You know, you've got one access area. Or let's say it's even this other little area here. Does it make sense to replace just that small area by itself when maybe you should get some that are in relatively similar or close to similar conditions, get more for your money by doing a larger project? That may make a difference. Or let's say you're up here. You're on top of this building. This is a 15-story tower, and you have a 16-story mechanical room that goes the full length of the building, but yet you have to replace the 16-story, and the 15-story is very in fairly condition, but um, it's going to be real expensive to go up and replace that 16-story tower. A lot of equipment costs, a lot of manpower costs, it may be more economical for you to do both of those areas at the same time. So now I'm going to try to turn this tool off after I delete. Bear with me. Oh, man, I was afraid that's what's going to happen. Okay. Anyway, um, so other factors may come to play here. So cost to repair, cost to replace, you've got to weigh out a lot of those different things. From a professional engineer or with consultants, so to speak, you're going to get a five-year budget forecast. In this five-year budget forecast, this is typical of, of the information that you would get. You're going to get the roof section information, the square footage, the age, the RCI, which is the condition index, it's fair, poor, good. You're going to see the recommended corrective action, which is in the next column, CN for corrective maintenance, CN for emergency maintenance. And basically, that just goes to talk about the value of how important it is to um, you know, get that accomplished. And then um, moving forward, you know, so these values is pretty much the kind of information you need, but there's going to be some heavy data info points that you get to make some great decisions. So here are some theoretical costs I want to look at. Again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but we are trying to look. The cost to remove and replace the roof cost to recover compared to replacement, and the cost to maintain the existing roof system. 
this is a table that pretty much shows you the cost of different roof systems, different styles, EPDM systems compared to TPA systems, PVC systems. You can see the average cost of what you may need. This may be driven by energy code. It may be driven by protection. It may be driven by design. So you can see here, and if it's a tear-off situation, you've got additional labor there, you've got disposal rates, you've got different staging, and then you have regular installation labor. So here, a typical roof system can cost you anywhere from $14.25 to $23.59, depending on the system. And this can be greatly defined based upon your needs and the needs of the area. So this is just some thumbnail kind of numbers to help you start thinking about this. Okay. Now we're going to compare the cost to replace a roof compared to the cost to recover roof. We talked about the importance of maintenance and how important those maintenance are. Um, you can see here that the cost to recover a roof system is much less than the cost to replace one. The bottom numbers are a recover system, meaning that you do not have the tear off labor is less, system labor is less, the equipment is less, you're taking off less, you're not going to the dump. So you can take a roof that would cost you $11.25 brand new to replace it. You could actually get it for $5.50 to recover it. Again, these are just the general ballpark numbers that I want you to be aware of. So for our purposes today, we're going to look at some prices for average systems. I'm just going to pull the very second one over from the right, $9.50. We're going to say, okay, this is what we're looking at, the cost to to deal with this, it's a 16,474 square foot roof. I'm going to need to replace it. I can get it done for a 950, so that's the value that we're looking at today. Let's say that this is your building layout. Basically, you can see how it is. 16 areas, B, the larger area, two systems you're going to look at today. So now let's take a look at life cycle costs. What that means is how, long, how much is this roof going to cost me over time? So the original gauge of the analog cost would be, uh, I replaced this roof system and it cost me $23,339 for the small area at the top. I'm going to divide that by the period of time or the length that I want that roof to last. And that's going to cost me about $1,216 every single year. Now, what if that roof only cost last for 12 years? Well, that roof is going to end up costing me about $2,028 a year. But what if I can extend it through maintenance? Well, goodness, now that roof only cost me $973 a year. Or let's say I did 30 years, did a lot of maintenance. Then that's going to cost me $811. So there's value to maintenance. The annualized cost is decreased, and you can get a gauge for helping you understand what the value of your roof is compared to what it may cost you to repair. Well, let's take a look at it again. All right, let's look at this. This is the lower area. Now we're going to factor in maintenance costs. Because you're right, maintenance is going to cost you money. You can't get maintenance done for nothing. So if you take the same scenario, 12, 25, and 30 years, and you look at that, and you look at what my average maintenance cost is going to be. So if you take the average price there and the average maintenance per year price is in this there, again, these are just estimates based upon average conditions in the industry. Let's say that it costs you $256.20 for maintenance for that thing, but it provides four years worth of protection, then it's going to extend that value so my total cost is less. This is the same example. I'm just trying to show you how maintenance cost affects and relates into your life cycle cost. So making the hard decision, we're turning the corner on this thing. Let's help you make some decisions. Using the data is important. Time to make a choice. The data's in. Let's take a look at things. You've evaluated the four factors that we've talked about. You've got everything considered. You understand that your reported SDL, ESL rather, there was your expected service life is only a year. If repaired it, the system is going to cost you $978,000. I'm sorry, $19,768. 
and it's going to give you eight years of life. Is that worth it? I don't know. Let's look at it. See. Okay. Well, if it extends, the cost to replace the system is, let's say we can get the cost anywhere somewhere between seven fifty and twelve dollars. Then you can see that your annual cost for the new roof system is going to cost you about seven or sixty two hundred dollars or ninety eight hundred dollars a year. But let's say you can get for the nineteen thousand dollars, you can get six years worth of extended life. So you divide the nineteen seven sixty eight by six, then that tells you that the cost of the roof is then thirty two ninety four. So if the thirty two ninety four is less than the sixty two hundred, so it's less money to repair the roof to get you six more years than it is to buy a new roof and amortize that across the span. So hopefully this is all making sense to you in evaluating costs. What you're doing is you're evaluating the cost of your existing roof, how much it's going to take you to do a new roof, and how much the maintenance is going to be. So we're running up on time, so I'm going to try to treat that. That's the same thing, just another example. You know, sometimes it's not going to be worth it to do it, like in this case. The, you know, it's not going to give you much. It's only going to give you one or two years of extended period. You can certainly replace that roof for a lot less than you can maintain that roof. So let's quickly take a look at these informations and try to do the same thing. If you take a look here and understand the repair cost is seventy to three fifty, it's going to give you eight years worth of service life. You can divide that by each, each other. You got nine hundred and twenty dollars. Wait a minute. The cost to replace the roof is going to be $70,000 over to the far right. You're going to get 30 years out of that, maybe. So for $23.50 a year, you can replace it. Or for $19.18, for eight years, you can repair it. So in my opinion, that would be a wise decision. Let's repair it, get eight more years, and see what we can do with it. But again, other budget constraints come into play. Do you have the $920 this year? No, I don't. You know, so you have to look at what you have, what you can do with the other factors. So that's basically some ways to base that out. Same thing with this situation here. The repair cost is going to be twenty-one five. The additional service life is two years, so your annual cost on that is only going to, it's going to be $10,750 because it's only going to give you two years. So you divide that by that, and it's going to give you that much. Whereas over here, if you've got a new roof system and you can carry that for 25 years, the cost is going to be about $11,123. So you're getting real close. You're getting close to that. And you have to remember what value is your roof at currently. If your roof is only worth so much, do you want to spend this much for the maintenance? I don't believe so. That's, I know that's a nutshell and that's sort of a, a guideline um, that we talked about today. It's by no means, uh, you know, the, the bottom. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say it's not the bottom line. There can be other things that can do it, but. I'm ready for questions um, on that. All right. Um, I guess I need to go in and make the presenter. Okay. Um, so just a reminder to attendees to uh, use the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen and address your questions to all panelists. Um, Mike, a question about um, infrared training. I know you have a lot of experience with that. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the role of infrared these days in the inspection process and, and maybe a little bit of information about when it's most useful and, and whether there's anything attendees should sure. know about the latest generation of infrared imaging systems. Right. Um, again, I have been doing roofing for a long, long time. I am a certified infrared thermographer. I believe that an accurate infrared has to be done from the roof line. Now, I've had discussions. Uh, with other people saying that you can do an aerial infrared with drones, but the problem is you're not down on the roof. I believe that you really, in order to do it properly, you have to be down on the roof, you know, accurate 
stated position, there's so many things that can affect an infrared. It gets so sensitive. The air in the space between the height of the drone pipe and the lift pipe, you know, can affect it. But infrared itself can be very useful in determining, man, how much water is in this roof system? Maybe I can recover this. I mean, you can spend very little to get your roof an infrared survey done and save yourself a lot of money. If you determine that there's not a lot of wet insulation and that the insulation is in pretty good shape, you can recover that system. So I believe that it is the best tool in the industry to confirm whether or not you have water in a roof system. There are other means, but in my opinion, it's the most accurate. Now, there are exceptions to that. If you have a ballasted roof system, it's not going to be so good. Unfortunately, the ballast itself retains heat, so doing an infrared survey on top of the ballast roof system will give you pretty much inaccurate results, unless you can do an isolated area of the roof by removing the ballast. I have seen that done, and I've done that. Slide the ballast over, let it sit, come back and do a survey there, and get an accurate result. Because the ballast itself retains heat and actually will give you a false reading. Okay. We have a question from an attendee who um, is referring to part of your presentation where you uh, discuss depreciation. Wonder, he's wondering if you can touch on depreciation a little bit more, primarily the value over a period of time, and, and is there a percentage scale that uh, one can use in this situation? Sure. Uh, I'm going to try to go back to that slide. Uh, Uh, see. Bear with me a second. I'm sorry. Bear with me while I scroll back up there because I do think that's some pretty good conversation points. Now, roof systems depreciate. Now, this is an average, an average industry study. Uh, this is based on all systems, all applications all processes. By all means, there are certainly systems that depreciate less rapidly than this. But on average, this is what we're looking at. So if you have a roof system and you put it down and you do maintenance on it, within about five years, you're going to lose about 5% of it. Now, I'm not an accountant, so I don't know how people that have building assets actually do depreciation with roof the way that they do cars. But what I've been told is that they try to depreciate those periods 10, 15 years. So you've got a system and it's supposed to last 20 years. If you get 15 years out of it, you fully depreciate it with your company internals, and then basically it frees up money supposedly for the new risk down the road. But if you can take care of it, you can extend it. If you don't, then it will depreciate it. Some systems depreciate faster than others. If you take, for example, some high-end, PVC roof system, um, maybe like a fiber type system, for example. I'm not trying to advertise for people, but just the fact they are one of the best industries in the sheets in the industry. Take a fiber type or Seanfield roof system and you put it out there and you do a good job of making sure your insulation is installed, it's installed correctly, so you're not going to have any insulation failures, you're not going to have any chronic failures. That roof will be much more suited because it doesn't require as much maintenance, especially if you use a consultant or got some guidance from an architect or someone to show you how to do details that are less maintenance intensive, then you could actually extend. So this roof system in this slide is dropping 90% after 10. Uh, with some systems, that 90% could actually be down in the 20s. It could actually be 15, 20 years from now. So it just depends on the system. Whereas if you use a different sheet that does not have such a performance record, and I'm not going to say any means there, but if you use that sheet and you go out with that sheet and you don't take very good care of putting it down and make sure it was done right, and you don't watch the crew when they're installing it, you have no quality control when it goes in, the details are very, uh, very intensive when it comes to maintenance, you use the wrong system on the wrong roof. Um, I've seen roof systems that depreciated far quicker than this one. Um, I've seen roof systems that failed after 12, which is very, very sad. But I don't know 
don't know if that answers the question. Please indicate if it did or didn't, but I'm hoping that I addressed your appreciation question. All right. Um, question here from an attendee about um, training, and in particular for um, in-house folks uh, who would like to, managers, attendees who would like to conduct inspections using their in-house staff. Are there any particular training sources that you would recommend, uh, and obviously on the low cost or no cost end of things, is sure. always appreciated? Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of sources that I would recommend right off the bat. Um, number one, the first source would be the NRCA. Uh, NRCA has some great published materials for different systems and different maintenance and different things to look for during an inspection. I would strongly recommend that you start there. Uh, the next leg of that would be I would have a risk consultant um, of an experienced level come in and give yourself maybe a lunch and learn kind of uh, two-hour session uh, where you can walk you through the key things to look for. That way you know. And it's, it's uh, very simple, very easy to document. We can bring in some inspection tools that we use, like sheets and things like that, where you know you can track down what you need. And most consultants can do those types of issues. But I would strongly recommend that you do that. Another way to approach that avenue would be your system manufacturer will also have their manufacturers that come out sometimes and walk you through what to look for in your monthly inspection. That, too, would be very helpful, and sometimes they do that at no cost. So you've got the books from the NRCA, you've got possibly a resource from the manufacturer, and you've got outside with consultants that can that would be happy to help you with that. All right, and attendees asking a follow-up question on infrared inspections, um, and you may have touched on some of this, but what are the best conditions for infrared inspections at the roof level, in particular the time of day, the weather, whatever the factors might be? I'm a uh, old school infrared person, meaning that I know there are new technologies out there. I have seen cameras that say that you can use them during the day. I have seen technology that says that you can do it any time of the day. I don't necessarily agree with that. The most important time to do an infrared survey, the most accurate time to do an infrared survey is going to be one hour after sunset. The purpose of an infrared survey is to try to capture the thermal difference between water that's entrapped in the roof and the roof system surrounding it itself. During the day, the sun will pull on that water just like if it was on the ground. The water is going to have a tendency to try to evaporate. It's going to heat up at a temperature a lot higher than the field insulation around that area. That insulation is, I mean, I'm sorry, the water is hot, so it's at a different degree of temperature than the surrounding insulation. One hour after sunset, when the thermal plane shifts and um, it's dark, the heat's gone down, the temperature of the roof insulation itself, after about an hour to an hour and a half, again, this is an average. If you're in Florida, it could be three hours after there. It depends on the intensity of the sun during the day. But what you're wanting to have happen is you're wanting to have the field of the insulation to return to a normal state, which doesn't take it very long. That way, the water is still at a higher temperature, at a higher state, and that will be more visible and easy to spot with an infrared camera. All right. Uh, at this point, I'd like to thank Mike for the great information today. Thanks also to our attendees for joining us. I'm Dan Hounsel, Editor-in-Chief of Facility Maintenance Decisions Magazine, and this concludes our webcast.